Hi folks, it's Pastor Dave. And Sarah. And we're here with another children's service and today it's gonna to be a little different. We're gonna tell one of the most important stories in the whole Bible. It's the story that happens right before Easter when Jesus went to the cross and died. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why that happened, how sad it was, but how it also brought good things to us. So let's get to the story. The day Jesus died. It was a very sad day when Jesus died. The soldiers who had arrested Jesus teased him for pretending to be a king. They took his clothes and put a king's purple cloak on him. They made a crown of vines with sharp thorns and put it on Jesus' head. Ouch. The soldiers made Jesus carry a heavy wooden cross. The cross was too heavy for him. Jesus fell and skinned his knees and the cross tumbled to the ground. A man in the crowd carried the cross the rest of the way. The soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the cross. They raised Jesus' cross up on a hill between two other men. The other men were thieves, and they were being crucified too. One of the men was angry with Jesus. If you are a powerful king, can't you save yourself? Why don't you save us too? The man spat at Jesus. But the other thief believed in Jesus. He shouted back, don't you know who this is? This is God's son. He hasn't done anything wrong. We are being punished for our mistakes but Jesus shouldn't be here. The man turned to Jesus and asked, will you take me to heaven with you? Jesus looked at the man and loved him. Jesus told him, yes, today we will be in heaven together. After a while, the world grew very dark as if a terrible thunderstorm was coming. It was as if all of creation was crying because Jesus was about to die. Jesus was feeling all alone and prayed to see if God was still there. Of course, God never left Jesus. God was with him the whole time. Jesus looked at the crowd and he saw so, he was so sad that people didn't believe that he was God's son. He asked God to forgive them for killing him. The soldiers offered him some sour wine, but he didn't want to drink it. He was ready to die. Finally, Jesus had fought for long enough. He said, God, the work you gave me to do is finished. He breathed his final, long, slow breath, and then he died. Grandpa! Well, if it isn't my favorite grandchild. I bet you say that to all of us, don't you? Of course, because you're all my favorites. <laughs> you're funny, Grandpa. But I have a serious question for you. Oh, serious, eh? Yes, super serious. I tried asking Mom, but she said she couldn't answer well enough and that I should ask you instead. Well, we better hear it then. We hear all about Jesus all the time and how wonderful he is and how many good things he did. So why did Jesus have to die? Hmm, that is a serious question and very big. I think that's why Mom sent me to you. I'm sure it was. And I can tell you the story, but we can't start with Jesus. We have to go way back. How far? Almost all the way to the beginning of things. Is that older even than you? <laughs> it's older than your mom even. Wow. You see, way back at the beginning, everything was perfect. There was just Adam and Eve and God. God gave Adam and Eve everything, but he told them not to eat out of one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God wanted them to remember that even though they had everything else, they weren't God. But one day, Adam and Eve heard a voice that told them a lie about God. Adam and Eve, did God tell you not to eat this fruit? Yes. We can eat anything else as much as we want. The whole place is ours. We're just not supposed to eat of this tree. Do you know why God said not to do that? No. Do you know why? Oh, yes. God told you not to eat this tree because he was jealous. God knows if you eat of it, you will have everything and know everything and become just like God. God doesn't want you to be like him. 
He wants to be greater than you. Just eat of the fruit and you'll be gods. Now they did eat that fruit, but it didn't make them like God. Instead, eating it broke the trust they had with God and it brought something new into the world. Sin, that means bad things. The world was broken now and many bad things would come from it. Sickness and pain and poverty and war, people fighting and hating each other. Once the world was broken, it just kept breaking. But why didn't God stop it? Well, he probably could have, but the brokenness was inside there, inside Adam and Eve too. To make things perfect again, he would have had to get rid of them. Then he could have remade a perfect world again without them, maybe put in new people in their place. Why didn't he? Because he loved them. He wouldn't let go of Adam and Eve, even when they broke the world with sin, even when they were broken themselves. Instead, God chose another way. Another way? Yep. God didn't get rid of Adam and Eve, but God couldn't ignore that things were broken either. He said that because the world was broken now, nothing could live forever anymore, not even Adam and Eve. Before, when things were perfect, they'd never ever die. But now that things were broken, they had to end. That seems harsh. God must have been angry. Mm, I don't think so, at least not in the way that you mean. Now think about it. With everything broken, things like sickness and war and anger, they were everywhere. Imagine being sick forever or fighting with people forever without any end. That wouldn't be good. That would be mean. When God said nothing could last forever, he meant no bad things would either. It's still sad though. Oh yeah, it was. Which is why God did another thing. God promised Adam and Eve that sin wouldn't last forever either that someday someone would come to save them and all the people from their sadness and from death. That was Jesus! That's right, but you're skipping ahead in the story a little. Oh, sorry. Now, Adam and Eve had children, and those children had children, and people spread all over the world. But as they did, sin spread right along with them. The brokenness never left. With each group of people, it would grow, and then that group would get old and would come to an end, but new brokenness happened with the next generation of people. That's frustrating. They couldn't get rid of it? No. People in every age have asked that question, but nobody's managed to do it. God did a lot of things to try to fix it. God sent a big flood to wash the world from sin, and only the eight best people survived. But after those eight landed, sin did too. The people tried to build a big tower to get to heaven so they could be powerful and rule the world from on high. But that didn't stop sin. It only divided them and made it worse. God promised people their own land where they could grow up and create whatever kind of families and towns seemed good to them. But they always fought with each other. God walked with people in the wilderness, spoke to them personally, and gave them the Ten Commandments so they'd know right from wrong. But they couldn't keep them. God made for people a great nation with palaces and riches so they could control the whole world around them. But every time, it fell apart. The people wrote out rules for everyone to follow to try to live the best way they could. But the rules ended up splitting up people instead of bringing them goodness. Wow, that's a lot of things to try. Yep, yeah, God and the people tried everything. But each time they tried, it didn't work. All of it came to an end just like the people did. This makes me want to cry. Yeah. I think maybe God felt that way too. When nothing else worked, when people couldn't get it right, God sent Jesus, his own son. Ooh, the good part. Jesus is cool. Yeah, but Jesus wasn't just cool. He was God's own son, born as a human being from his mother Mary. 
There'd never been anyone like him, and there never will be again. Because Jesus was born from God, Jesus wasn't broken like everybody else. Jesus didn't sin. He just did lots of good stuff. Everything he did was good. He healed, and he taught, and he fed people, and he loved them. He was everything that people were supposed to be. It was like the perfect times had come again in him. But there was still a problem. There always is. Exactly. No matter how well Jesus taught, us broken people couldn't understand it right. No matter how much Jesus fed or healed people, the world around him was still broken. It was like putting the most wonderful cookies ever in a cookie jar that had no bottom. The cookies would just fall through. And they'd crumble on the floor, yeah. Jesus couldn't save us by teaching us or doing miracles. Jesus saved us by changing the one thing that we couldn't, our brokenness and the death that came from it. We're getting to the answer now, huh? That's right. This is why Jesus had to die. All of us, all the people God loved, were broken and they died. Everything in the world dies eventually. If God loved us, God had to meet us where we all end up, in death. And God had to fill up and fix death, turning it and us into life again. Kind of like Dad getting a new engine in the car when the car broke. Yeah, kind of. Except I don't think Jesus said the words Dad said when that happened. <laughs> Let's not worry about that right now. When Jesus told people the world was broken and he came to fix it, some people didn't like that. They got rich and powerful from all the brokenness and they didn't want it changed. When Jesus said it wasn't right and God didn't like it, instead of listening to him, they decided to get rid of him. They thought they could rule forever that way. But they were dying just like everybody else. I know, people are silly that way sometimes. So those people arrested Jesus, accused him of bad things at a trial, said he was guilty, and sentenced him to die. That's horrible. Yeah, it was the worst thing ever, the biggest sign of our brokenness that there's ever been. But a funny thing happened. Jesus jumped off the cross and told them how wrong they were? No, that wouldn't have changed anything. Jesus died. But when Jesus died, something different happened. Death was supposed to be an end to sin and brokenness. When death swallowed up a broken person, it was just chomping them like it was supposed to. But Jesus wasn't broken. He didn't have any sin. When death tried to eat Jesus, instead of death breaking Jesus, Jesus broke death. It just couldn't swallow him. Death got broken? That's right. And when it broke, Jesus saw all the people it had swallowed, and he loved them, and he was with them. It was like a big light shining in the darkness. Suddenly, all the brokenness was filled up. But we'll talk about that next time. For now, you can see why Jesus died. He couldn't just make people live forever or their brokenness would have lived forever. And he couldn't tell people how not to be broken and not die because they couldn't do it. He died so he could fix death. And save all of us in the place we all ended up. That's amazing. Yes, and also sad. God wouldn't have had to do that for us if Adam and Eve had trusted him, or if we could trust him. But even when we couldn't, I'm glad he saved us that way. Me too, Grandpa. Let's say a prayer together. I'll say the words of the prayer and you can repeat after with Sarah. Let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For helping us. For helping us. And saving us. And saving us. By filling up. By filling up. Our brokenness. Our brokenness. You heal the world. You heal the world. Because you love us because you love us. Help us remember. Help us remember. To love you. To love you. And each other too. And each other too. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Now Sarah, this was a little bit of a sad story when Jesus died, yeah. but right after, next week, we get to tell the best story in the whole universe that's ever happened. What happened right after? You will want to come back because it's super awesome, don't you think? Yeah, it's a pretty great story. So we'll see you next week and have fun and remember to love people in God's name.